Welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and today I'm going to be talking about messy queer books. One of my favorite tropes, I think, are just completely like unhinged, super messy queer people who just make really bad decisions, especially when the actions kind of come from a very genuine place. It's the character being really raw, and we really kind of see who they are. Um, and are able to embrace them while also critiquing them. Kind of adjacent to like morally gray, but it's not really necessarily about morals all the time. It's just about um, just making really poor life decisions. This is particularly relevant right now because from June 5th through the 11th, the Queer Lit Readathon is happening. Um, it's hosted by Kathy and Rogan, and for this round, I am the guest host. So I wanted to put out some recommendations, and one of our prompts on the bingo board is Messy Queers. So all of these will fit that prompt, and some of them will fit others too, and I'll try to mention what those are. Now, the books that I have have several different brands of messy queer characters. There are some that fit what I described in the beginning where they're kind of like unhinged and not well kind of making decisions. There are some that are just genuinely making poor decisions just because that's how life is. They're like growing and learning, um, particularly in YA. Um, and then I have some with just really unapologetically messy characters in different ways. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about um, which book covers which type of messy queer um, so that you can have your pick from the different varieties uh, of mess. The first book that I have is one that I'm currently rereading and that is Summer Suns by Lee Mandelo. This is a horror novel, Dark Academia meets Southern Gothic. This book focuses on Andrew, who is supposed to be moving back to Tennessee in order to live with his best friend, Eddie, as they both go to grad school. However, shortly before he is set to move in, Eddie dies by apparent suicide. Andrew still moves in, um, and he's convinced that Eddie did not die by suicide and wants to figure out how he died or who killed him, all the while being haunted by Eddie's literal ghost. Um, so it's a very compelling read. I don't really read a whole lot of horror, but I fucking love this book. There's so much going on here thematically. You have someone who is like metaphorically haunted by this memory and taking up all of his time, but you also have the literal haunting that's happening. And all of this is tied in with a lot of queer themes as well, which brings us to the messy piece of it. All of these characters are a fucking wreck in different ways. There's drag racing, cocaine, um, and just in like individual interactions and like flashbacks that you get, um, like Andrew and Eddie, it was, it was not, um, the cutest situation. They definitely made poor choices and also like really didn't understand uh, all that they were feeling in different ways. There's a lot of repressed uh, gay feelings happening. There's just a whole lot in this that is fucking incredible. Um, as I'm rereading it, I am uh, kind of marking different things. So it's, there's a lot that you can really dig into if you want, but it's also just a really compelling um, horror novel as well. Summer Suns could also fit the seasonal prompt. And I think it could technically fit in two seasons because it's horror. So if you want something spooky, if you want to tap into um, the kind of Halloween vibes, it fits that. But there's also a quality to it that feels very like the kind of like oppressively sticky, hot summer, like Southern summer. So I think that it could fit for that as well if you're looking for um, kind of darker summer reads. Um, and if you wanted to use it for the choose your own prompt, uh, we don't have a score for horror or dark academia or what have you. So you could use it for that as well. Next up, I have another one that's in the similar category of just really profoundly messy people, uh, that have dubious decision-making skills. We have The Transition Baby by Tori Peters. This book focuses on Reese and Ames. 
um, who are ex-girlfriends. Uh, they're both trans, but after they break up, Ames detransitions and ends up getting his boss pregnant. Unable to really kind of grapple with that, he reaches out to Reese in hopes that she would want to co-parent um, the three of them. And this goes back and forth between when they were dating and the current day, and uh, there's a lot of questionable decision making. And Reese in particular, I feel like, is the prototype, like, really deeply unhinged, unwell kind of character. Um, and she's, she's very compelling in that way, uh, to me anyways. Um, but Ames is also, I think, equally messy, but in a different way. Whereas Reese kind of, um, I feel like self-destructs in a more like externalized way. You have Ames, um, internalizing a lot. I have a lot of thoughts on it, uh, but I really loved Detransition Baby. The next book that I have is An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. This is a sci-fi novel, but I think that this is really good if you aren't really used to sci-fi or don't really like heavy sci-fi. It's kind of new adult and I think would be palatable for people who are more used to reading contemporary or young adult, um, as well as just you know, even if you're a sci-fi reader, you can still enjoy this, but I think that this is particularly accessible. This focuses on April May, who stumbles upon what she thinks is an art installation of a sculpture that looks like a robot. Um, she ropes one of her friends into filming her with it, um, and it goes viral overnight because it was not an art installation. There were several of these things that popped up around the world all at the same time. And she basically becomes the face of the mystery of trying to figure out what these things are. And throughout the course of the book, um, well, of course, you do have the element of the mystery itself, which is compelling. This is really about her experience with sudden fame. And with that, um, she makes a lot of dubious decisions, uh, hence why this book is on this list. Uh, this is very much about what social media and fame can do to a person, uh, especially if you're not expecting it or not handling it with caution. Speaking of sci-fi, I also have The Seep by Hanna Porter. This focuses on Trina, who is in a world post-alien invasion. Uh, the aliens, the Seep, took over the Earth and basically made uh, utopia. Um, they also came with technology, or kind of are the technology. Medical stuff has been completely revolutionized. Trina's wife decides to use that technology to be reborn and relive her life. Um, so the majority of this book is Trina just dealing with that. It's very much centered on grief, and understandably, Trina is extremely messy in all of that. Um, there's a lot in here that deals with alcoholism as well. There's so much about this book that's just fucking incredible. I don't want to sit and try to describe the sci-fi elements just because I think it's something that you have to experience. Um, but I freaking love it. And with that, I have some YA titles that I want to get into. So all of these are going to have characters that are making really questionable decisions. Um, but they're kind of learning through them. So first I have, um... The Meet Cute Diary by Emery Lee. This book focuses on Noah, who runs a blog that focuses on trans romance. He shares stories of meet cutes that happen to trans people. But when someone comes out saying that the stories on the blog are fake, uh, he's in a really difficult position and ends up going into this fake dating scenario in order to kind of save the reputation. And it kind of goes from there I don't really want to say too much because honestly I didn't know a whole lot about the trajectory of the book going in and I really liked it, but trust um, that Noah is definitely a messy character, definitely makes some questionable decisions, but is also, you know, in a tough place. But I really liked it. I still need to get my hands on a physical copy. I listened to the audiobook, which was quite good. As well as the messy queer prompt, 
uh, the Make Cute Diary also fits romance because that's very much what it's centered around. It also fits seasonal vibes because it's set in the summer. Part of it's actually during a summer camp. Um, so it would fit really well for those. And since it's this author's debut, it's probably a new to you author if you haven't read it already. Next, I have Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender. This book focuses on Felix. And towards the beginning of the story, somebody posts a bunch of pictures of him pre-transition with his dead name um, in the school lobby. And he decides that he needs to figure out who did it so that he can get back at them. And... Um, he has a fairly good idea of who he thinks did it and decides to catfish them. And uh, a lot of stuff happens from there. Again, a lot of messy decision making. I mean, catfishing for revenge in and of itself sounds a little unhinged. But there's, there's a lot more in here and a lot more that he learns throughout the course of this. This actually has one of the few love triangles that I actually like. Um, and it's because of kind of the lessons that he learns through it. Like, it's not necessarily a plot point in the same way that I think the traditional, like, using it for the drama of having to pick between the two. He's actually, um, there's an actual purpose to it. He looks ever after would also fit the romance prompt, um, since romance is ends up being kind of a central thing in here. Um, I would argue that it also fits seasonal vibes. I don't actually know what season it's supposed to be in because I know that they're in school, but it ends uh, during Pride. Um, so you could probably, you could argue for spring and definitely summer. This book feels more summer to me. Then the final book that I have in the making poor decisions and learning category um, is Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valerie O'Connor. This is a graphic novel that focuses on Freddie, who's in this toxic on-again, off-again relationship with the popular Laura Dean. Throughout the course of this book, she's grappling with this relationship and with the impact that a toxic relationship has on her friendships. I really adore this book. This is one, I think I read it twice last year, and it's one that I come back to a lot um, just because it says so much important stuff and um, with a lot of queer YA, but also this one in particular with the message that it has. It's something that I really wish that I would have had as a teen. Um, and really, I think the past three books in particular that I've talked about, um, definitely these two, and I think Meet Cute Diary to a certain extent too, a lot of it is about accepting the love that you actually deserve. And that's kind of like what they're learning, like in kind of the, a very, very messy way. Uh, and that just is very, it means a lot to me. Anyways. This fits a few other prompts. It's a graphic novel, um, so it would fit for that. Uh, it's also, I think, could fit in romance. It is not a romance, but it centers romance and discusses romance, so I would use it for that personally. I also think that there are some things that you could do with the make with the choose your own prompt, um, especially if you wanted, for instance, something that focuses. Uh, heavily on tough issues uh, because this talks about like you know toxic relationships and that sort of thing but it um, also deals with abortion in this as well. The final kind of category of messy queer book that I have are uh, specific characters that are kind of um, messy or unhinged. I, I keep using those two words a lot but that's the video um, in their own right. In this category, I'm actually going to start with a flavor of messy queer that I personally don't actually like. And uh, that's something that I've been learning. Um, both of these books, for the astrology gaze, they're definitely Virgos that have a Pisces placement that's severely fucking something up. Um, so they're very like type A but there's a huge piece of them that like doesn't want to and they end up delving so much into their type A personality that it 
fucks things up. And while I may be a little tired of the character archetype, um, that's on me. That's not on these authors. So I'm still going to talk about these books, even if they weren't for me. Uh, they're definitely going to be a kind of messy that someone else can relate to and really love. So we have um, Book Talk Sweetheart Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. This focuses on um, Grace Porter, who is a recently graduated PhD student who goes to Las Vegas as a treat and gets married to someone she's never met before. Um, so this is her dealing with that. But more than that, this is about the expectations that have been thrust on her and figuring out what to do uh, post-graduation. There was a lot of good stuff in here. Even if I personally found like pieces of it frustrating, I definitely um, think that it could work really well for a lot of people. And I think this could technically fit for the romance square. I don't think that this is housed like in adult romance. It's not, it's definitely like literary, literary or like just general contemporary, but the romance is a big element in it. Um, and then the other one in that kind of brand of messy queer, I actually just got done reading. And that is Melt With Me by Jennifer Dugan. It comes out May 17th. This is a young adult romance. It focuses on two girls who used to be best friends, but after they hooked up, um, they never really talked about it and kind of had a falling out. But they still have to deal with each other because their mothers co-own an ice cream truck that they have to work at. Several things happen and they actually have to bring it to a really important festival. So they have to go on this road trip together. There's a lot that I liked about this. The premise was cute. The like writing style was very like, I mean, it's, um, when I say very YA, I don't mean that like in a negative way. I feel like some people do, but it's like very cute. Um, however, the character archetype, I've just, I need a break. That's on me. And, uh, there's a lot of miscommunication, which is, also not my favorite trope. However, I know that there are plenty of people who do like that. And I definitely think that there's a lot of really good space to talk about the issue of miscommunication because a lot of people deal with it. Um, there are some books that I have appreciated a lot because I resonated with like the reason that they were miscommunicating. In particular, in Heartstopper, the Nick and Charlie novella is a recent read that's had miscommunication that I've liked. This one doesn't have it in the same way, but just because I personally can't relate to it doesn't mean that somebody else can't. Um, and I think that if you're okay with that trope and you want a cute summery young adult, this could definitely be for you. So in that way, this also fits for um, the prompt for romance and the prompt for a seasonal read. Next, I have Road Queen. This is a one-shot romance manga. This book focuses on Leo, who is described as a lesbian fuckboy who rides motorcycles. But when her beloved motorcycle is kidnapped, she's forced into kind of a fake dating scenario and has to prove that she can be a decent lesbian. <laughs> so clearly, Leo is a certain brand of messy the whole situation is just very chaotic, um, so it would definitely fit messy queers. It would also fit romance. Um, I think you could make an argument for queer sports because motorcycle racing, racing is a sport. Oh, and it's a graphic novel, so it fits for that prompt as well. Then the final book that I have um, with a messy queer character is Iron Widow. I am fucking adore this book. This book focuses on Zaytan, who is in the society where they are battling aliens in mech suits. Men control the mech suits, but they need a woman in them as well. But the women are almost like practically a battery in a lot of these instances. And the whole, um, the whole society is very patriarchal, very sexist. Um, when her sister is murdered by one of the co-pilots, she decides to become a co-pilot as well in order to murder him. And it only gets more wild from there. This definitely fits the messy queers prompt because she is 
fucking pissed. Um, I mean, her goal is literally to murder somebody. Her anger is definitely righteous. It's definitely in the right place. Um, but she is very angry and especially in the beginning kind of unhinged. She's suicidal basically in the mission that she's planning to do. But overall, this is an incredible, incredible book and I'm so excited for the sequel to come out. I don't think it's coming out until next year. Um, but I'm really stoked. I need to reread this one soon. This one uh, would fit the science fantasy prompt um, as well. And I think that it could be used for the choose your own uh, prompt. A prompt that I might put in there for this book uh, would be a book with polyamorous representation. Those are all of the messy queer recommendations that I have for you today. Definitely be sure to check out more about the readathon. It's happening from June 5th through the 11th. I've got an announcement video that's up. So do Kathy and Rogan, who are the regular hosts of the readathon. There's also an Instagram and Twitter for the readathon, as well as a story graph challenge. I'll put all of the links in the description and in the comments. Let me know what your favorite messy queer story is. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye.